welcome back to my YouTube channel. Today's topic is we're going to be breaking it down on how we can look for institutional entries using the overall inefficiencies or just using imbalances. Okay, so uh, what we have here is the odd NZD, uh, which is a forex pair, and we're going to start on a daily time frame, and we're going to see that you know what is the overall trend and how can we break it down and mitigate certain areas and how can we look for retracements and look for, um, we can so-called sniper entries or just an institutional entry where banks bring price right back up into a certain range and we can um, sell within those positions or buy depending on um, uh, the structure, okay? So since this is a daily time frame, on the left to right, we have honestly breaks of a structure to the upside. We have this as a break. Um, this lowers the cause of this new high. And now that we know that based off of, you know, this daily time frame, we know where is this high coming from? It's coming from this low here, right? And this is going off of a higher time frame. So what we can do is we can set this here and if price just breaks right back down, then we just, you know, um, shift the overall narrative and we can start looking for long-term shorts. But again, we're just gonna start with daily, break it down into one hour and then the 15, a five and so on and so forth. Okay, so let's go into one hour and just see what we have. Okay, cool. So now that we have that, I said more details, you can see that we have candlestick structure and reaccumulation models that's being presented uh, within um, the thing I just outlined here. So if I just want to follow along within this, we have a break to the upside here. That high is coming from the down push before the upper move. Nice s and zones within the level and we have that demand zone holding and now you have structural shifts again break right back up being bullish that's another break uh, to the upside and now that we have that as a break to the upside we have this down push before the upper move occurred so now that is what we have there there's another break in here so we have multiple breaks of structures um, to the upside and now that we have this highest peak this highest high it's coming from these lows in here so let's just mark that out and we just dived in from a daily to a one hour this low is what made this high and again this is just on how we view price on how banks um, bring price um, to the upside or to the downside but in this case what do the banks do they are adding in buy positions right they're adding buy positions because you can see the overall uh, narrative of this move which is the uptrend and big buying pressure is coming in within the markets and all in all, whenever you see a candlestick being printed, um, it, again, it's from banks or the composite man himself. So as you may see here, we're holding that demand zone. Um, and then we had um, an impulse move to the upside. And so what we have now here is that we can look for buys the moment that price comes right back down within those areas. So down push before the upper move. So these are the two zones that looks good to me on what I can use to look for uh, potential reversals and upside. And so in this case, since this is a wick and a wick, that is a form of an SND zone, which is what we so-called a, um, a hidden SND zone or um, a unmitigated SND zone where price pull back before it made the new higher price again. And let's just add in this one Fibonacci tool that I use to map out or just to slice that SND zone in half 50%. So FIB, this one, 0 0.5, 0. And as you may see here, these are my settings, 0, 0 0.5, and 1. Honestly, I, still, I only use the 0 0.5, but let's just leave that there. Perfect. And so all I'm doing now is just waiting for price to retrace into this SND zone because within these highs, these lows, these lows, and these lows, it's just going to more likely than not function like liquidity. So remember, even though they have these zones, they can still break through and the overall uh, move can just shift at any given you know, time. But at the moment, this is just what's being presented at the moment. Think of this like a live move or a live market. And all we're doing is just um, mapping out which is areas where we can look for a reversal or a retracement into, and we can look for the upside again. So let's just click play. Okay, cool. So as you may see here, we did have a rundown, a full upside, or actually, yeah, an upward move, upward candle, 
and you can see that the form of retail concepts, this is now traders participating within these um, breakout entries. From there, you have liquidity on both ends. So all in all, this is some sort of distribution like or um, a weak hand to strong hand transfer, it's either to um, be a reaccumulation model or a distribution model, right? So what retail did here is that they, um, the moment that these banks brought price right back up, people were just buying that momentum candle because at one point this wick was in engulfing, but the way that it closed, it closed within um, a wick and within that wick, price rejected, came right back down and swept all the liquidity off that trend line because there's stop losses above these highs and now there's stop losses um, below these lows. So there's buy stops, sell stops on both ends and both ends got liquidated, okay? So again, for us, we're just waiting for price to retrace into our overall zone. But what we can do here now is that on lower time frames, there can be structural shifts, right? And so now that right there is, we can go against the trend to take us right back down into certain S and D zones, but let's just leave this here, which is the the, the Fibonacci uh, fifty percent tool on this S and D zone, and let's see if we can dive in into a fifteen minute time frame. Okay, so now that we have that, we have honestly this break. We have a break of a structure right here meets the pullback rule. Price made this low, made this new high. So banks, this is the last area where banks brought price up before they took price lower and now they're um, shifting price. Okay, they're shifting price right back down. And now in this case, you can honestly trade off of um, inefficiencies or imbalances. And what you see in here, this is an imbalance, right? This is a push back down. Look on how price is coming right back up to retrace into that overall area. And so in this case, for me, um, I can honestly, look for the highest momentum that it came in before it sold off. I can add this low to this high and just put on a FIB tool just like this. And I'm already in the trade, right? Because this is where banks took price, displaced, met this break of a structure. And now that we have a break of a structure, all we're doing is now waiting for price to retrace the 50 off of this area. Or you can still use this FIB on this um, 50%. And you can see that it has not hit your uh, 50%, but that's fine. But again, this is just where you can play within um, on how you can mark up um, the key areas on where banks bought to sell. But in this case, um, this is valid. And you can see on how price came right back up into that 50% mark. And I could already, what? Um, look for a sell entry the moment that price taps in at the 50%. Um, stop loss above here, target that demand zone, and let's see what we get. And so all in all, we know that price shifted in price on a different time frame in a different story, because if I went on a different time frame, this will give you multiple breaks of a structure. So price had a, um, a, a quite of a run up, but then now it's like, this is the new low that we can look for partials in here um, to look for sells, right? So again, all I'm doing here is breaking it down from the bigger picture, which is bullish, impulse move, and now on lower time frames. So let me just put that there. On lower time frames, I see structural shifts, right? Break of a structure just like that, using the 50% off of this up before the downward move, trading that 50%, um, and we're looking for shorts right above or right at the 50 stop loss above this high here, because we know that this is a high that's protected and banks does not want price higher or go above their initial um, sell from here to here, because if so, um, it wouldn't make sense and they're gonna be negative within their positions. So let's just leave that there, stop loss above here. And let's just see oh, what we get. So, so, okay, cool. So now that we have this sell um, of a rundown, you can see that, okay, now I can set this to a break even, I can set it to a, a tighter stop loss, however you want to operate. But for me, in this case, I just want to target this liquidity here and I can close some off, right? So again, 50% tool is what we use as in where we expect banks to take price right back up 
into certain inefficiency or imbalance, or you could say FDGs. Um, and then you can look at that as an overall sell area, right? Because this is just an area where banks sold and there was not a, a, enough buyers or actually sellers um, to sell within that, um, that time. And that is just why price retraces into those imbalances to give us a, a, a rundown, right? Or just give us a retracement and see on how can we confirm within that retracement to take us right back down into um, certain areas or key areas or key ranges, right? So in this case, we're looking for a sell position because you already see that there is already a double structural break, one and two now, right? So this is the second one right there. And so that is a double break of a structure. And so it makes sense on, you know, um, to see a overall run down, okay? But all in all, just to recap, retail, trade the break above that, they got stopped out, um, trade the break below this, stopped out. So all in all, banks are just playing back and forth. They're, um, they're creating, or the, it's just manip manipulation of liquidity and sweeping both ends. So let's click play. Okay, cool. So now from this, this is a liquidity um, grab or liquidity sweep. And now I can either partial and stop loss above a protected high or just a high where it had an initial run up before the sell. And now I can move it back down into this way, right? And so now I'm, I'm closing either 70% or 80%, leaving the rest to run. And if you want to approach it that way, you can. But for me, I'm following along with structure. And I'm going off of this high because this is where they bought again to sell to initially liquidate this low. And it gives me a nice body break off this 50 minute time frame. So this makes sense. Um, and so let's just, you know, go from there. Um, but again, if that is what you want to go off of is structure that you can within your stop losses, or if you want to go off of um, inefficiencies, you can as well. Because if I just go into a 15 minute time frame or on this 15 minute time frame, you can see that there is still a wick to wick unmitigated candlestick. And so what I can do within my stop loss, although that already took some or majority off, I can be flexible with my stop loss and I can go above this honestly to here, just in case if price runs right back up to mitigate this um this overall inefficiency right so which is this right there because from this wick to wick there is a small imbalance that has not been fulfilled yet and now that right there is where i can be flexible within my overall um you know stop loss okay and so let's just say now that if you miss this whole move this can still be a, a potential entry right so let's just put that there which is that and this is just a, um, an, a system that you can build for yourself, um, which is using um, imbalances and efficiencies um, and to look for uh, retracements into, and you can look for cells, right? Um, just like that, stop loss above that wick and go short, right? And target something lower. Maybe you want to uh, target this whole imbalance because that is what we do when it comes down to the market create imbalances all around within the market, create liquidity and sweep out liquidity and mitigate certain um, areas, right? So let's just see if we do get a retracement into that purple zone. If so, that'd be great. If not, then we can just see a tap into this demand zone. And within the demand zone, we can look for a buy, right? So let's move forward. Okay, cool. So now that we have that, we have more of a rundown um, at the moment, this is still active, which is this, um, this imbalance in here. And we can just leave that there just for the future, um, just in case if price does run right back up. But this position that we just took in here was a win. And now you're taking a majority off or the rest off inside this main zone. But if it just come, if it just now comes with momentum, then I can just leave this, um, uh, running stop loss above the momentum, uh, moves, right? So let's just continue. Okay, cool. Cool, it's, it's respecting that 50% mark. So let me just delete this. And so let's just see if I can now look for a potential buy. Um, it's hitting that 50% mark. And again, this is a 50 minute time frame. So it's honestly like a um, day trading type of trade. 
And so let's just go from there. This is 9 p.m. So this here is the Asian session. And within the Asian session, we can now see some sort of retracement right back up to liquidate these highs or just to mitigate more of these imbalances, right? So let's just go forward. Okay, cool. So now you can see that based off this uh, 15 uh, minute time frame, it respected the uh, FIB, which is again, a um, we can so-called a institutional entry and it's tapping into that 50% mark and it gives you a nice move. I can already set this into what? A break even, right? Just like that. And let's just continue. Perfect. It gives you much more of a move. And even if we get stopped out, we get stopped out, right? But that's fine. Because again, it's like along the way, you're targeting a certain area where we want to capture, either liquidate these highs, mitigate these imbalances, or maybe just this purple uh, zone that we have left, right? Or, you know, we, we left behind. But it, because again, price can still retrace into that, um, that supply zone or that imbalance and then tank to the downside again, right? So let's just continue and see what we get. Perfect. So now you see, we, we just took a win to the downside and now we took a win to the upside. And this is just us um, focusing on how imbalances um, play a big role when it comes down to smart money concepts and seeing how can we look for uh, mitigations in certain areas and how can we play back and forth and you know what can we look for? Does it look um, good for us to enter within a specific area, a specific zone? If so, um, then we can go for it, right? So let's just see what we get. <clears throat> um, but left and right, still bullish. We still expect longs to the upside, but at the moment we just want to see on how price um, comes right back up, either to sell off or just to buy up again. Because all in all, this is just doing this, and we're just working with in here, right? Just tapped into um, an imbalance. Okay. So remember, all we're trying to do here is just confirm its higher low to make its higher high. Right. So let's put that there. Continues, continues. Okay. It continues going up, sweeps out liquidity off of these lower highs, mitigates an imbalance, and then falls right back down and comes back down into that 50% mark area. But within that 50% mark area, there is a demand zone in here to take us right back up to mitigate. Um, these more of an imbalance or maybe this purple zone that we have left behind. So let's just do that there. And now we can move forward, right? And let's see what we get. Okay, cool. We have not of a, on what we're you know looking for, um, but we're still holding that area. So let's just see what we get. So more liquidations, uh, we could potentially liquidate this low and then run right back up, but we'll see. All right, so buying pressure is coming in. There is a liquidity graph of these highs, and it's still part of, remember, this demand zone, and it's still respecting that 15% um, that uh, or that 50% mark. And you can see it much better on a one hour time frame. It's just tapping into that 50, 50, 50, and you can either be a buyer um, into a supply zone here or just liquidity highs above those areas, right? So again, all we're doing here is just seeing on how banks are leaving behind imbalances within the markets and how can we trade or um, expect a, um, a bounce or a rejection off of a certain supply or demand, right? So let's go from there and let's just see if we do get a um, continuation up. Okay, there you go. So that right there gives us a rundown. And within that rundown, we can honestly... Um, this already position would have been closed the moment that this retraced right back up. This was a winning trade off that 50% mark. This was a um, run down, still respecting that 50% mark. Still nothing, didn't give us a clear break. There has now been left behind equal highs, which is in here. So now in this case, we still have this purple area in here where price can still retrace right back up into. And we have now a new zone in here which is this imbalance in here, right? And so now from there, you can either include this wick or this, um, this bearish candle that caused these lows, or you can go off of this bullish move, this placed higher, 
became lower. And now what we can do within this, we can now add in a 50% mark and we can look for that institutional entry again, right? So it's now either this or this stop loss above here, right? So now price is coming right back down to tap into a demand zone. Um, so we still have this one demand zone in here where price can come into, um, but overall, remember, this is still uh, bullish. And remember, the, the way that the retail trades, they trade off of, again, um, support and resistance, uh, flag patterns, um, and, and things like that, right? Because now they have something like this. And what are banks more likely to do is hit a trend line, buy it up, buy it up, buy it up. All these people are going to buy, 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 and potentially do something like this. And we usually see that when it comes down to uh, retail patterns, right? So again, they manipulate, they create liquidity all around within the markets and, um, and they just want to stop you out. Okay, so let's just put play. So it gives us more of a rundown. Um, retail is still seeing this something like this, right? And they're just still looking for some sorts of, remember, um, buys and they just wanna get that breakthrough, right? Something like that. So let's just see on what we get. So we have rejection here, oops. Here, 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 not there. Um, but if we did put, if, if we did move this lower than yes, it would have. But again, um, it's not very precise, but let's just leave it like that. And you can see what all these lower highs here can function. They can now function like liquidity, so a big burst or a big impulse move can occur and, you know, a sell-off, right? Because now it's the composite man himself, it's now tapping into a support level and with no support levels, they can take price up higher to sell off or just to see no highs, right? So now you can create a bias all around within the moves that we currently have to buy it up into these supply zones or, you know, um, yeah, the, the unmitigated imbalances. And then we'll, once we mitigate, we could be a seller and just see, see on, there's a structural shift. If so, just like this, then we could be a seller. If we get another break, perfect supply, supply and go short, right? And so again, all we're doing is just mapping out, you know, the structure, the S and D zones that's being created and how we can read those imbalances. And we're just trying to look for, um, um, the overall entries into an imbalance. So let's see what we get. So now there you go. We have now a big burst to the upside, which is an impulse move. And that right there is a run up, right? So now that we have that, okay, cool. It did not tap us into our 50% mark because our 50% mark is right here, just like that. Um, and so you can see it's like, yes, we're right about the move, but it didn't hit it, hit our, um, our 50% area. But again, this is still part of an area where banks, um, they are looking to look for sells in to take price lower or just to counter sell and then run right back up and hit their main target in here. And then, sell. it really depends on the overall structure on how price retraces into that supply zone, um, and things like that. So what I mean by that is that if I'm seeing on how the momentum was just like this, you can see that on how price made a higher high, higher low, higher high. For me to be bearish, price has to honestly break this to look for sells and then go short, right? So, um, but at the moment, uh, this is just on what we have. And now on lower time frames, I can go off of a break of a structure off of this low because this high is coming from the previous candle. And if that breaks, I can look for a uh, potential shorts off the 50% and then go for sells, right? So let's just click play and let's see on what we get. So we can honestly delete these zones or this zone because it doesn't matter to us, right? And all, all what matters to us is on how price is coming back up to mitigate certain candlesticks or certain imbalances and see how can we continue to the downside or right back up and shift, right? Because now at the moment, uh, we are holding this low, this high, and this low. So it's bearish at the moment, right? So let's just see on what we get now. 
So let's see. Right there. So now if now that we got tagged in inside of this um, this move, we can look for a stop loss above these highs. And that it right there um, should pretty much give us a nice trade to mitigate certain imbalances or certain equal lows, because that is what you know uh, double bottom traders are trading off of, and also this liquidity down here, right? Um, but all in all, price can still do something like this, run right back up, and then run right back down, because remember, don't forget about this one mark, and there's still some sort of imbalances within here. Um, but all in all, we're going off of this 50% mark, and seeing, can we see that, um, um, that move that we're looking for? is the downside, because in this case, we are holding this low, this high, and this low, which is something like this, break, retracing. And remember, even if the price runs right back up, on a different time frame, this can just be a wick, and we will consider that wick, not as a breakup structure, but as an, um, a liquidation, just to see a sell-off, right? So um, that is just what we so-called wipe off schematics. So let's put play. So there you go. Now that you have an impulse move to the upside, did it come back up to this one area? So let me just put that there. So yes, it did, right? So it came back up into that area. And even though that price, when it hit that 50% area, didn't really give you valid break of a structure because just because we have a 50% mark does not mean, oh yeah, let's, um, let's just automatically just pull part position and let's expect a whole sell off. No, because you still have to look for structural breaks on lower time frames, but we're understanding on why price is retra retracing into certain areas and how we can refine our entries and, um, and look for sells, right? Or the downside, okay? So now that we have that, we had an other position in here as well. And we had a stop loss above these highs right there. And we're looking for a mitigation into uh, a lower price. And so again, this can either just give us a short sell to see an upper move. But again, we're going off of inefficiencies um, or imbalances entries, which is again, um, where banks buy in to sell to either see new lows or just to counter sell and then run right back up, right? So let's just put play and just see what we get. There you go, a nice sell, right? That right there is a nice sell and on lower time frames, I can partial along the way um, within that move because if I now go on a price range, from here to here, yeah, 14.3 move. Yeah, that's fine. Um, that right there could make your whole day. It's like a scalp or a day trade, and that ranges from 8 p.m. to 8.15, right? Um, from 8 to 8.15, that's a scalp or a day trade, we can say. And now we're looking for an overall downside, and now I can take partial, partial along the way because now this high, it's still coming from this low, but within that cell, it's honestly coming back down to mitigate this in um, this engulfing candle, which is an imbalance as well, right? So let's just see on what we get. Oh, nice. So you can see that even though we had a stop loss above here within these highs, um, banks are now selling within their position and now we can look for an overall downward move. And this is what we're looking for, right? This is what we're looking for. And now um, there is tons of liquidity that's sitting below here. And now we can adjust our stop loss the moment that price makes its new lows. But in this case, we can still continue on holding. And if I now zoom in, there is a supply zone in here, right? Supply zone in there, and let's just move this. And now that right there broke structure. Within that break, we can now honestly look for a 50% move or 50% mitigation, stop loss above these highs. And we can look for the downside again. Um, but if price just makes a new low, new low, then we wouldn't really don't, we would, we're not gonna focus on the supply zone because they already creates its own s and &E zones along the way within structure, and we can use that, right? So again, all we're doing is just see on how price mitigates certain areas and how we can look for the downside and so on and so forth.
Okay, so, okay, cool. So now that price gives a run up, you can see on how price, um, if you were not, um, let's just say if you were not, or if you were actually looking for sales and you were looking for a retracement into here, there would have been nothing. Why? Because price just came with momentum and now we can delete this, but things like this is fine because you understand from a left to right um, you know, view that this is overall bullish, right? And so again, uh, what did price just do? Um, pull right back down, pull right back down, create all this liquidity here. And we came right back up to liquidate all these lower highs. So what we can do honestly is we can just wait and see on how price, right? On how price reacts at this high and see on what we get there. If this is gonna become a body or just a liquidation and just a CSL off, then from there, we can now see all these demand zones, all these equal lows in here, all, all these equal lows here, um, just to break through, right? Um, and so again, you have to play with multiple time frames just to see on how can we confirm this, um, this candlestick or this overall move, right? And so let's just see what we get. Okay, cool. So now we have a rundown right back down into um, the downside. And now if I play with multi time frames, there is no body. On a three hour, there is a body, but on a four hour, there's no body. Six hour, there is a body. Eight hour, no body. A daily, just a wick. So within that wick, that tells me that more, more likely than not, this is the last high. And if that closes within that day and the next day, we can see, see a uh, more of a rundown, okay? Um, and we just see more lows getting liquidated, more inefficiencies and imbalances being mitigated. So um, you can see that even though that the trades that we take did come back up into certain areas and did fall, um, that right there did mitigate certain imbalances. And now from there, we can now honestly see on how can we look for a downside again. So let's just see on what we get. So there you go. You have now, let me just delete all this. So let me go on to 15. So we have an actual break. Remember this wick that presents it on a four hour time frame as just a wick, not a body. So this wick is um, coming from, we can just say it's this low. Yeah, this low. So now from there we have imbalances and we can honestly grab this low to this high and see where it is precisely at there. And as you may see here, there is some sort of supply zone right there. And what do we expect? Price to come right back up into that um, supply zone to mitigate and then sell off, right? So let's honestly leave that there. And there is also liquidity on all these lower highs. So if price just runs right back up, remember retail, they do something like this. And if retail trades a breakout, it'll just create more of a buy liquidity and underneath is their stop losses and we can now target their stop loss. So let's just see on what we get. If we don't get that, that's fine. Let's go break above, break above. Okay, cool. So we have official breaks and let's go in a 30 minute time frame. And all we're doing again is looking for retracements into unmitigated candlesticks. So that right there was a 30 minute time frame. 30 minutes. And that was part of this 50%. Let's just put that back on. Yeah, right there. 50% mark, um, wick. So yeah, this makes sense. There's also another one here, right? Because even though that price comes right back up, it can still tap into this wick. So you have two supply zones that you can use, but all in all, this is just one impulse move to the downside. And we're just looking for the mitigation uh, uh, within that, right? So let's just put play. So let's see, did we get that? No. We did not get that. Uh, let's see, let's put that there. So again, you can go off inefficiencies or imbalances and see retracements, or you can just go off of structure as well and see on how you can create its own ranges because now this is its own break. This low, it's coming from these highs, retrace right back up, 
liquidated these highs in here, and now price comes right back down into these um, into this low. You can look for this to mitigate this imbalance in here. Um, and so let's just put that there. Right there. And you can look for a sell in here to take it right back down to the downside because structure has already presented a break, a run up. This is what we so-called a full liquidation off of all these clusters, which is lower highs, lower highs, lower highs, right? Lower high, lower high, lower high. Come right back up, liquidate this. And this can just create a redistribution model and then sell off, right? Um, but all in all, we're just looking for the overall structural moves. How does it present itself? Um, it's new ranges that it creates along with the new lows and how can we trade it within that way, right? So let's just see. Okay, cool. So now from there, um, if you were if you work on lower time frames, you can honestly look for a sell in here from this high to these lows, right? And now you're already into a stop loss above here or into a break even. Really depends on how the way that you trade. Um, but all in all, this is an area where price can honestly just stop in here and then sell off, right? But if that does not hold, then these areas up here still make sense, right? And all in all, we're just looking for that entry to take us right back down um, to the downside, so, right? So let's just put that there. Uh, perfect. So did that take out these lows? So it just creates more and more liquidity um, to the downside or underneath these lows. So we're still part of this. Um, and let's just see what we get. Yep. Nice. Perfect. So that right there was a nice winning trade uh, within that move. And that is just going off of that imbalance where banks um, sold. And now when they sold, there was a lack of or not enough sellers or buyers within that move or imbalance. They retrace right back up into these areas and they can look for um, a sell in here. But why did I choose that is I, I can either put on a fib or I can just understand on how imbalances work and you can trade off of that way because this low is what made this high, right? And we understand why did the why did they buy in to sell because they want to liquidate all these um, lower high, lower high, lower high. Because remember, retail they trade in this way, like this, runs up, liquidates, and when they liquidates, they bought in to sell. But within the sell areas. The only area that they're pretty much, you know, they want to bring price right back up is where there's an unmitigated candle, which is in here, right? So I don't see any unmitigated, unmitigated, unmitigated areas or candlesticks in here. The only unmitigated candlestick within that move is this one because this mitigate this, and this is the only area that price um, um, that came into to retrace and just to sell, right? And so that right there was a nice retracement um, zone. It was part of the impulse move to the upside that made this low. And that is a 50% um, a mark. And now you're looking for what? Sells, right? Stop loss above here or above here, but for me it would be here. Um, so right there. And now you're targeting what's more lows because now all these lows is just gonna function like liquidity. Right, and so let's just go on a higher time frame and just see where we're at. Uh, we already see the shifts in price, and if price does break below this, that's even better. Closure uh, with the body, that's even you know that's perfect. And so now we can honestly hold within our position that if we are soon trading this, and let's just say for example we are soon trading this, then our stop loss is still um, sitting above here, and we can turn it into a break even. And now. Uh, we expect price to retrace into um, supply areas, right? Or yeah, supply area, right? Because we understand that price can come right back up to mitigate more orders to sell off again. So right there. So there you go. You would have been stopped out um, on your break even. And let's just delete that um, just like this. And so remember, you're, you're here on lower time frames trying to um, create the bigger picture on what the bigger picture tells us. Okay, so let's go on a 15 minute time frame and see what we get. Um, we're still part of this um, imbalance in here. And now that we have that, 
let's delete all this. And so remember, there is liquidity being created all around within these markets, equal highs. Um, there's a high in here still. So for me, for myself, I can honestly still expect that, that they liquidate these equal highs. So yeah, they liquidate all these equal highs because now it's like you can play with multiple time frames and see, yeah, even though that this did respect this 50% mark or yeah, the 50% mark that we had here from this low to this high, just like this, it did respect. In our lower time frames, structure did give us a nice uh, break, which is this break, this low, it's coming from this wick in here, within that wick, there is um, valid breaks, but that's just going off of intermediary structure to give us a nice sell, right? But now you expect price to come right back up or you wouldn't, you wouldn't be surprised on why price is coming right back up because again, you understand that this was just forming equal highs um, and, the, and for us to be actually bearish on this, it had to break, honestly. So actually this low, this high, it's what made this low. So all this is just a form of liquidity, right? And so now you understand that when you now break it down from a lower time frame, that there is equal highs being you know, created. And, and now if I uh, refine this zone to this high, just like this, oops, right there, it never tapped you in. And in this case, now you're going off of equal highs in here, and for you, for yourself, you might not even take the trade. Even if you missed it by a wick, that's fine. Because now, even though that price runs right back up, back up to the upside, you can honestly already look for a sell in here, stop loss above this wick, because there is a inefficiency within here. There's liquidity being created on top of that. And you can see that you are now um, taking a win trade and you're targeting the lows, right? The lows that made the impulse move, which is this and also these lows in here. That is your, the target that you want to capture and the whole goal is to take out this, right? And so um, all in all, price did shift from bullish to bearish and we have double breaks um, to the downside and it makes sense on why price can potentially just fill all these zones or actually all these lows. And within these lows, we have more lows, which is more liquidity off of this. So you can just see it's like we, we, um, we read the overall story behind this and, um, and it makes sense on why, you know, we're looking for shorts or we're looking for certain uh, retracements in certain key areas just to give us that rundown again, right? So let's go play and just see what we get. Okay, cool. So from there, from this high to this low, price ran right back up. Uh, but remember, we're still part of uh, a sell range, right? So let's just delete that, delete this, and there you go, right? And so let's just go on a one hour time frame and just see what we get if we're missing anything. Um, so the only area I would see it is just this high, that's it. Because remember, it's like this high is what made this low and there's still no valid body, right? There's still no valid body break. So let's just go look for um, continuation to the outside. Yep, there you go, right? So again, price made this high, made this low. You already had your double break, your double break, these lows, right? You have, so let's just outline this back up, higher high, break of a structure, upper move, break of a structure. What did price just do? It did something like this. So let me just outline that. Right. And so just like this. So all we were just doing is studying the rundown, seeing how we can get into certain areas and tap into certain unmitigated candlesticks, which is this one that was one. There was another one above that. So actually there, it was this imbalance that was one to take it right back down. Also, there was a refinement in here that caught you a nice sell um, before price just came right back up and liquidated even more or just mitigate more orders. Why does it come right back up? Because remember there is, um, there can be more orders that have to be left being mitigated on behalf of the composite man himself. So again, follow within the ranges that we're working with and um, 
And then from there, you can understand where is more likely uh, for uh, structure to deliver to. Because um, remember, there was still equal lows in here. Look on how they liquidated those lows. And now we can use these zones, right, to look for uh, potential cells, right? And so now from there, we can honestly, from this, this low that made this high, we can grab a 50% area, right? And we can go off of a cell in here and go short, or we can just wait for price to hit that 50% mark and then go for cells. And this right here would be a institutional entry, stop loss hit above. And now we can target the low that's been created right there. So let's see what we get. <clears throat> so price did not tap us in into that 50% mark, but in the future it still can. Why? Because highs are you know becoming liquidity from here to here. And remember the way that retail trades, patterns, they look for breakouts and it does something like this and then it sells off, right? So let's put that there. So again, this was a nice sell on lower time frames, and it's still part of that supply zone. And we can look for another run down, right? So does it come back up? So more equal lows. So let's just stop there. Um, and so now this is a sell. Yep, sell, sell. 50% did not hit. Equal lows has been formed. There is more of a higher high, higher low, higher high, higher low, higher high break. That's one. Second break is two. And now price came right back up to retrace into this wick, which is a supply zone. And then it gave us a nice uh, sell off to the downside. Okay. So now we're looking for that downside to liquidate all these lows. And what day is this? This is October 12th. And so within October 12th, um, let's just honestly just delete all this. Let's go on a daily time frame just to see where we're sitting at. And now we have a supply zone from this low to this high, right? Because everything has been mitigated. This candlestick mitigated the previous one. And so now we can go off of this low to this high, right? And now that right there is an SMD zone, right? And now we can look for a retracement right back up into that range, hopefully. If not, then we can continue on going short. Let's look for this one here, just like that. Right there, 50% mark. That's a nice sell. Perfect. And this is just you know moving us you know even much more quicker on a higher time frame. Okay. And so now we're expecting price to go lower to hit this low. And that right there is a sniper institutional entry to take us right back down to see new lows. Right. So you can do this on any single time frame. Um, and we're just using the concept of imbalances on how we view imbalances in smart money concepts, um, inefficiencies, and how you can refine your certain areas of where price can come up and reject. And you can create a whole system around that and perfect your entries and you know target the next look like the low. Okay. Uh, but that's it for this um, webinar. Hope you love this video. If so, make sure to like, make sure to comment, um, whatever you want to do. Um, but see you on the next one.